Why are Australian banks slashing fixed rates despite successive rate increases? Well, we're going to have a look at that today. Plus, we've got a question from Susmus talking about one tip he'd recently heard on how you can reduce your monthly repayments by a drastic amount. Let's dive in and take a look at it from the top. So having a look at it from the top, we see Australia's banks slashing fixed rates despite increased interest rates with the RBA's recent um, rate increase in August. Uh, we're starting to see a lot of fixed rates come down. Uh, fixed term rates, especially for years, have recently gone down by a drastic amount. We've seen Commonwealth Bank, Westpac, Macquarie and Suncorp all come out recently saying that they're reducing their four-year fixed rate. And the decision is a sudden reversal from such savage rate hikes that we've seen in recent times. And only banks as far as a few weeks ago, have increased their fixed rates. We saw both ComBank and Westpac slash their four-year fixed rate to 4.99%. And in CBA's case, this was a 1.6% reduction on the previous fixed rate that they were offering. And their current standard variable rate sitting at that 5.8%, uh, the four-year fix is now lower. Now, don't be deceived by this uh standard variable rate here. No one actually ever gets a standard variable rate. You usually get a discount off it. Most banks variable rates at the moment are sitting in the low 3%. Um, that's going to increase with the recent, recent rate hikes. But it gives you an idea that maybe the medium term outlook for fixed rates isn't going to be as dire if we're starting to see the banks come out with fixed rates where they're pitting it around that 4.99%. Now, is this because that the banks are feeling generous? I guess the answer is probably not. Um, the most likely explanation is that there is chances and growing concerns that there might be a recession around the corner and interest rate trajectories, albeit most experts are starting to predict uh, that there might be uh, the prospects of lower interest rates next year, um, which is starting to be more and more of something that we're seeing echoing out by a lot of industry experts. Now, the pressures from central banks from the beginning of the year um, you know, was really to push rates up. And uh, that was brought on by global money markets. And we're starting to see that easing of rates. We've seen this particularly with a lot of the um, bond yet, uh, yield rates. We only need to look at it from a month ago. So one month ago, the bonds market was pricing in the fixed rates for two and three years in and around that 3% mark. Now only a month has gone, the current bond yields are hovering in under the 3%. So in that two and three years. So we are starting to see a little bit of a movement, uh, probably the money markets factoring in the fact that there could be a recession and reducing expectations on the outlook. Now, uh, once again, the central banks, including the Reserve Bank of Australia, have paid little attention. They've actually shelved for decades the long-held determination to avoid recessions at all costs. Instead, they've been doggedly focused on putting a lid on inflation. Now, why is this? Well, we see that the Reserve Bank's um, definitely uh, got you know, their monetary policy. One of their uh, main points and objectives is for stability in the Australian dollar, maintaining full-time employment and economic prosperity and welfare. Their main corner piece to the monetary policy and a lot of their uh, framework is, you know, uh, really revolves around the fact that uh, the control of inflation is really the centerpiece of their monetary framework. They're wanting to keep inflation at their target band um, with the two to three percent. Now that target was introduced in the nineties, and right now we're well ahead of that. It is a little bit confusing because. If this is something that's so important to the Reserve Bank, why is it that we only get inflationary data every three months? So um, I'd love to know what your thoughts are in below in the comments. Leave a comment below. But it is funny that the Australian um, Reserve Bank only receives this data every three months, which really forms a cornerstone of their understanding and um, policies around cash. Uh, the cash rate uh, is determined by this. So um, as we can see here, rate hikes are going to continue, but there'll be a point where they'll have no further room to increase. And if we move into a recession, we might actually find that there will be an 
unwinding of where we've come from. So the RBN and their comrades have arrived at the inflation fighting party, which is albeit very late. And uh, they've pushed through interest rate hikes over the past few months at the quickest pace in decades and deliberately uh, over the past few years, encouraging everyone to dive in headlong into debt, which is something that's a little bit counterintuitive to the central bank's ethos, which is scope out the future, uh, attack ahead of any curves that you see, telegraph every movement, and take a steady and deliberate action to keep the economy on an even keel. Now, um, we know a lot of the banks have forecast the official cash rate. We see ComBank here saying that they feel that the cash rate would uh, peak at 2.6% in November, Westpac 3.35, NAB 2.85 November, and then 3.35. We've got to remember with the official cash rate, we're at point one when we saw $250 billion of lending written. And back then when the banks were doing their assessments, they were only buffering the repayments of borrowers at a further point, uh, at a further 2.5%. So what that means is when the cash rate gets to 2.6%, that $250 billion of loans that were written during that pandemic period over the last sort of, um, I'd say 18 months to two and a half years, over that span, we're going to find that borrowers are no longer able to afford their debts that they were previously assessed to. And that's where Commonwealth Bank's uh, prediction of their cash rate at 2.6% for me makes a lot of sense because it's taking into account the 0.1% cash rate at the time, plus the buffer they were using back then of 2.5% and getting to 26 We're seeing Westpac and other lenders with a slightly higher assessment. We saw uh, Westpac in July uh, this year, the 22nd of July, come out with some information saying that they felt the cash rate would get to 2.35 in September this year. We're at 1.85% at the moment. That could happen. And then peaking rates at the end of December 2023 and then June 2024, rates starting to come back down to 2.85%. And then the end of December 2024, uh, rates continuing to come down. So definitely will be interesting to see how that plays out. We have seen the bond market starting to price in the fact that the rates might not go as high as anticipated. We've seen the banks come out with fixed rates now uh, showing us that maybe 4.99 fixed in for four years gives us a, a flavor where right rates might be. And, um, you know, there's been a lot of talks, especially with the Reserve Bank and where they've predicted things to be and the exact opposite has happened. Now, um, what we do know is we've seen oil prices plunge in the last six months. We've seen global money markets unwinding their expe expectations on rate hikes and now starting to say that they smell a recession. And we saw that last Friday with England and they raised rates uh, the most that they've ever done in 27 years, and the uh, UK's Reserve Bank equivalent said that they'd uh, likely see the UK slide into a recession late this year and stay there for the next 12 months. So the next year is what they're expecting. And we've seen Sydney and Melbourne starting to come off the cool where the post-pandemic boom in real estate is starting to decline. And we're seeing that decline accelerate. Uh, let's keep this in mind that Yes, it is going backwards. We're seeing 2.2% decrease. We're seeing a 1.5 decrease for the month of July. Uh, but we've also got to remember that they've seen some, you know, even from an annual change point of view, it's becoming more neutral. The year before we saw crazy growth, 20, 30%. Um, so this is all very part of the, the property cycle. Yes, we'd expect these areas that are traditionally far higher costs from a medium cost perspective. Sydney and Melbourne, where people's borrowing powers are starting to reduce, mean that the property prices will in uh, in turn fall. Uh, banks have responded in, with this new environment with drastically reducing new borrowing. I wouldn't say drastically. We'd say every rate rise we've seen, there's been a decrease of about 5% in your borrowing criteria. But the banks have also increased some of their discounts on the variable rate. So it's kind of neutralizing it out. But I can definitely say borrowing power has reduced 
uh, more than it was last year. So, you know, previously last year, if you were pre-approved for 600,000, at the moment today, you might get a 570, 560,000 loan. So I wouldn't say it's been drastic, but it definitely has been a reduction there. And we're seeing Jonathan Mott, who's a banking analyst, say that if the Reserve Bank continues its rate hikes that um, at the current speed that we're seeing, there might be a large number of Australian homeowners that could end up in harm's way. And that's something that we need to be careful of because as we talked about during that pandemic, the banks were doing assessments on borrowers and their affordability on the current rate plus 0.25%. So once the cash rate gets over 2.6%, we're really in an uncharted territory where borrowers were assessed to be able to afford a loan up until that point. And if their incomes haven't increased, and we can see with wage increases hovering in at 2.2, 2.4%, then there's going to be an issue around affordability. We've seen increased costs, particularly on living, um, having a, a massive impact on, on people's situation. And we know Australia is uniquely sensitive to interest rate movements. And that's for two reasons. The first is we are one of the most indebted uh, countries in the world. As well as that, uh, the debt is mostly attached to real estate agents, which begs the second question here. Uh, ho most home loans in Australia are overwhelmingly variable, unlike the US where rates are fixed in for the life of the loan. So this gives the Reserve Bank a little bit more bang for its buck. Every time they move the official cash rate, uh, it has a greater impact on the Australian market compared to other nations because it flows through relatively quickly through to household spending patterns. Now, um, this is also an issue in itself because if it has greater impacts, then if we're not tracking inflation monthly and we're only tracking it every three months, we're flying blind. And that's where the Reserve Bank could be going too hard or you know, too soft or not right. It's really hard to get that mix uh, down pat when you're getting data only every three months. And uh, that means that, you know, we're sensitive to these rate movements and the RBA needs to be extraordinarily cautious and make sure that they get the rate heights just right. Um, now, for months, the RBA has argued that households have built up savings and buffers accumulated to protect themselves against these rapid rises. But we do know that it is an ever-changing dynamic um, where the Reserve Bank last year was saying their rates weren't going to move until 2024. They changed their tune quite quickly. And is this something that we could see them do again, where they, they're talking about rates need to normalize and continue to move? Or are they going to find we'll get in a recession and have to move things back? It is clear with variable rates tracking now nearly above the four-year fixed rate, which is, as we talked about earlier, around that 4.99%. Uh, the spate of double rate hikes appears to be near an end and we might see rates cutting next year, which is becoming a more and more possibility. So definitely something interesting to see. Leave a comment below. Let us know what you think. Um, definitely love to hear your thoughts and what you're thinking. We did have a question from Susmas who was asking us about a thing they saw recently. So um, Susmas talks to about that uh, they have an existing loan and someone on Facebook was saying that they, if you make extra payments, a huge lump sum payment into their loan, the monthly repayments reduce drastically. And then um, they go on to talk about how this could be useful for an investor. So yes, there are banks out there that will allow you to make a lump sum repayment directly in the loan, and then they'll recalculate your repayments based on what you owe the bank. Now, this is good and bad. It's good in that you have lower monthly repayments, but it's bad because they're going to try and make you pay that loan off over a longer time, which means you pay off more interest over the long run. They'll also still allow you to pull that extra cash out. So let me explain what I mean by that. Let's say you've got a 300,000 mortgage, you're on a 30 year term, and let's say you're just paying a 4% interest rate at the moment. Uh, your monthly repayments are 14.32 per month. So $1,432 per month. Let's say you make a lump sum repayment. So you pay the $250,000, uh, you pay 50 grand in and you only owe 250 grand. 
outstanding. What the banks, some banks do is they'll recalculate the amount you owe and say you've got 50 grand extra. And instead of you paying $1,400 per month, they'll reduce your monthly repayment to the minimum of $1,194. But what it actually means is you're still paying it off over the 30 years. So you're paying the maximum interest over that term. So total interest paid 179,000. Whereas if you paid that same repayment of the 1432, so let's just say that's another um, $230, $240 extra per month, 240, if my calculator will work, 240 extra per month, you'd actually pay the loan off in 22 years and you'd save yourself 54 grand in interest. So yes, it does. It is something lenders will let you do, Susmas, but you've also got to be careful if you do take up the minimum repayments. Yes, you've got lower repayments in the short term, but it will be something that might cost you more in the long term. The good thing also is you always have access to those extra repayments. So it's something you can always pull back out at any stage. So you can feel confident if you make that extra repayment, you can take it out. Keep in mind, not every lender lets you do that. So um, here at Hunter Galloway, we're mortgage brokers. We're mortgage brokers in Australia. So if you're looking for a great mortgage broker that has no cost to the service, we can definitely help. Hit us up if you're living in Brisbane, Adelaide, Sydney, Melbourne, at huntergalloway.com.au, fill in our contact form or call us on 1300 088 065. I'd love to have a chat with you. My name's Nathan and we help with home buyers, investors, refinances, whatever you're looking at doing. Let's chat and see what we can do today. Thanks guys. We'll see you again soon. And until next time, have a great day.